statistical mathematical fact. Never has been down. Has broken every single record. There is no asset that has come close. It's the only thing in the industry that was not touched, that was not hacked, and it never fails doing what it promised in 2009. It's never What's failed. the best performing asset the world has ever seen? And you'll find out that so, it's Bitcoin. So, you know, very few times in, in Bitcoin's history has the, um, has the Bitcoin price really gone below the weekly 200 period moving average, as you can see. All right, very few times. And when it has, it has very quickly recouped out of that zone, even when it's come to kiss it. It's a very quick, for the first time in Bitcoin's history, not only did we not get a quick rebound off of the 200, we went deeper than normal below the 200 on the weekly chart, and we stayed there for what's considered to be a fairly decent period of time. It's never done that. It's always been these V-type rebounds as if Bitcoin were bouncing off of a trampoline, right? And the trampoline goes down a little bit, but it swings the price back up. Trampoline down, up. Trampoline swings down, but swings back up. Here, it actually stayed for a while. And of course, we know now a lot of that was due to the excessive fraud that was um, being uh, perpetrated in the system by your FTXs and um, your Sam Bankman Freeds and your Three Arrows Capital. It's just a whole bunch of things. Everything but the kitchen sink, everything including the kitchen sink, was thrown at Bitcoin this time. And it was done with force. So, in all other prior instances you had some of the FUD but it was not like the FUD here so you had FUD but here it was FUD and negativity in articles um, about Bitcoin in the overall cryptocurrency space it was FUD with you know times 10 and you had fraud here but now wasn't anything like here you had fraud times 10. You know what I'm saying. So this, this, this heaviness of everything, you have political regulatory concerns here, but you had the po political part here with the, um, the Biden administration going against maybe Bitcoin mining, going after Bitcoin mining, um, uh, applying political pressure from a self-custody point of view and, you know, the whole nine yards. But whatever we had experienced in the past, um, it was experienced to the 10th power this time, which, in my opinion, was one of the reasons why you overshot. We overshot the 200 period moving average this time more than any other time in the past. And what's also interesting is that this top was capped, right? It was largely capped by China manning, mining the China ban, which really dropped Bitcoin. Bitcoin was on its way to making 100,000 plus on its move up, but the China ban capped that. And so Bitcoin lost half of this momentum here. So I'm going to draw this for you. I want, I want to show you this. This is the momentum that was going on, which should have continued. But half of it was cut. Then Bitcoin had to recoup the part lost. So this secondary move had to almost do a redo. But what if you didn't have to redo anything and you put the, this portion, right? This portion that Bitcoin had to do twice. So it had to run from here to there, here to there twice. But what if you put that on top of that? You see? So instead of it 
redoing many of the prices it had to be, you put it on top. And there's your 100,000 plus, right? So this should have been on top. I don't know if you understand that. I don't know if I, I complicate the, the matters or what have you. I'm trying to explain it the way I explain it to my traders. But so because Bitcoin had to, to go, Bitcoin dropped to 28,000. So it ran from 28,000. All right. So it ran from 28,000 to 64. So 28 to 64. But it had to go all the way back to 28 and reduplicate it. So imagine that you're a runner running a marathon. You're, the finish goal is 110. But the organizers of the race say, I know you were in first place at 64, but you got to go back to mile 28 and you have to continue the race from there. And you're like, but I'm at mile 64. Why do I have to go back to mile 28? It's just the way it is. So Bitcoin goes all the way back to mile 28 and it has to rerun from 28 to 64 and it overshoots a little bit. But this run should have been here, not from down there. So my point is, is that because this falls from a lower level, it's no surprise that it drops to a no lower level. Because this should have been up here, you would have dropped to the 200 and not broken it. But because the drop originated from a lower capped view, this the length of this move should have started there. You understand? It should have started here. But because it started lower, this low is also lower. And that's from a technical point of view. Now, here's the thing. Because we overshot, you know how sometimes you can overshoot, you can pull the slingshot. Guys, check this out, right? So you can pull a slingshot back, right? Ting, right? But if you pull it back, and then you pull it back a little bit more, and wait a minute, and one more, the trajectory is going to be more violent, right? So my point is this, the trajectory, because this was pulled back, this slingshot was pulled back further than it normally would, did, was further than it normally historically does, this move up should be commensurate to that pullback. So the move up should be more violent, should run further than your average typical move up because the pullback was, was harder as well. All right. And so, you know, I just find all these things fascinating, guys. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all right, I will tell you this. It doesn't matter. The only thing, guys, the only thing that matters is more Bitcoin. Price at the end of the day doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is more Bitcoin. Now, in reality, the USD denominated price of Bitcoin actually holds back your ability to accumulate more Bitcoin as it goes up. So it's bittersweet. You do want the Bitcoin that you've accumulated in prior points throughout history and at lower prices, you want those increasing in value. But so the rise in price rewards your Bitcoin from the past but it hurts the Bitcoin from the future. So if your goal, which is what I teach my guys to do, your goal should be to be richer in Bitcoin terms every week of your life. You should be DCing every single week, irrespective of price, irrespective of what's going on, irrespective of the news, irrespective of the FUD, irrespective of the geopolitical environment, irrespective of the economy, irrespective of Bozo Federal Reserves all over the world. Who cares? You 
should make Bitcoin your unit of account, and you should not determine your wealth based on how much more extra dollars I have. You should base your wealth on a new unit of account. How much more Bitcoin am I have? How much richer in Bitcoin terms am, am I? Do I have more Bitcoin this week than I had last week? That's your wealth. And you don't let the U.S. dollar's opinion of that wealth affect or influence you, right? So my point is, before I let you go, is this. A rising U.S. dollar price of Bitcoin rewards the Bitcoin of the past, but it hurts the Bitcoin of the future. So it makes the Bitcoin that you're accumulating of the future more expensive than it used to be. You understand? So that's where this strange dichotomy comes into the place, this strange love-hate relationship with a rising Bitcoin USD denominated price. And what's the major point here? The point is, is that you can't wait. The point is, is that Bitcoin does not reward the waiter. The Bitcoin does not reward the delayer. The Bitcoin doesn't reward the people who say, well, I need more regulatory clarity, Oliver. Bitcoin doesn't reward that. I need to be sure the government's not going to ban it. Government can't ban Bitcoin, dummy. The government can only ban itself from Bitcoin. But, okay, Bitcoin doesn't reward that mindset. But doesn't reward the mindset, doesn't reward the mindset, I need to see that it's being adopted faster or more, or I need to see more businesses start to accept it, or I need to see if it can come down, back down to 30,000, or I need to see how it handles this resistance. Bitcoin does not, over time, reward the waiter, the delayer, the pauser, the guy or the woman who says, I first need to see something. Bitcoin is the purest form of opportunity rooted in the now. It rewards the actor of the now. All right? And this is why there will never be a company that will ever, ever, in the history, not in your lifetime, not in my lifetime, not in the history of hum the future history of humanity, as long as human beings live on this earth, no company will ever own more Bitcoin than MicroStrategy. That is a one-off, done. It's in the freaking history books. You can count that. Why? Because he acted first. He acted fast. He acted in the immediate now. He did, MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor did not say, well, let me wait for regulatory clarity. I need to wait for regulatory clarity. I need my politicians to sign off on that. Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me wait for FASB rules to be changed. Uh, uh, I, I hate this accounting, this accounting system. I mean, he didn't freaking wait. And now, with a constant buying plan, he's doing what I'm telling you to do, Ev be richer in Bitcoin every single quarter, every single six months, every single year of your life, no one's going to catch him. You have seen it. You heard it here first. No company will ever own more Bitcoin than MicroStrategy. He acted first. Take a lesson out of Michael Saylor. Take a lesson out of MicroStrategy. Act now. Be first. Don't be the waiter. Don't be the pauser. And my God, don't be a shorter. Oh, my God. In fact, if you're a shorter, get off my page. It's the dumbest low. I, I don't want to be around people with IQs that low. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, listen. Ciao for now. Just wanted to see how this test this test goes out went went out. But uh, I hope it's okay. We'll be able to do some cool things with this before Bitcoin hits one hundred thousand. Guys, I told you, I'm out. I'm gone. I'm gonna be traveling. You're gonna be like, where's Oliver? Where's Oliver? What happened to him? Traveling all over this country, that country, this continent, that continent, and I'm not gonna be thinking about you. <laughs> Thinking about you now, though. 
All right, guys. Ciao for now. Boom. 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 All right. My name is Oliver Velez, and I am your 13%er Bitcoiner. Be safe out there, and until next time. Boom.